But of course, there you know, there's no way you could do a series centered on such a lightning rod like Phil Schlafly and not have negative reaction. And I would say if if they're not up in arms on either side of the debate, then I'm probably made something very boring. So. <laughs> Mrs. America, we were transfixed watching that. We actually got to see the entire series before it went on the air. So, uh, you know, as people are discovering it, it is interesting uh, to hear. But I was particularly fascinated, certainly my wife was, uh, who's the ultimate feminist and considers Phyllis Shafley, uh, your central figure in this ensemble, uh, to be the enemy. And so walked in and, and every time you saw it, and I saw, as this series went on, you saw the human being and you saw a very complex person. But I think it's interesting as to how you approached this whole idea, how you came up with this, sort of the beginnings of the uh, Lib movement and the ERA, and then telling it through the eyes of the uh, opposition. It's a very interesting kind of approach. Yeah, um, I was really looking to create a series, uh, a political drama, and particularly one centered on women. And, um, I had a meeting with uh, one of our producers, Stacey Scher, and she pitched this idea of doing something with Phyllis Schlafly and her campaign against the Equal Rights Amendment. And I thought that was really interesting. I thought it was a great jumping off point for this, looking at this period. And particularly since we tend to tell the stories of social change movements from the point of view of the leaders of that movement, I thought giving that more context and telling the story from the point of view of the leader of the backlash or the opposition just felt like a different way in than we normally do. Yeah, it's re it's fascinating too. And the whole way the ERA went along at that time, everybody thought this is an easy thing to pass. It was a part of it. It was not controversial at all. I mean, I think what Phyllis did was make something that was not controversial, controversial. And that is a killer when it comes to constitutional amendments, as I learned. Well, you see, and you know, and towards the end of her life, she was a, a big promoter of Donald Trump. And you see what, what he's done in weaponizing, uh, using things to weaponize people against each other here. And, and she figured that out too. But as this series clearly points out, and there are a couple of shrewd lines in there that say she was more of a feminist than any of them. And uh, because here's a woman looking for her way in, a, a woman that came out of Harvard and everything else, and trying to use that and get into a man's world too. Uh, you know, it was, it's an interesting thing to point that I learned from this series. Yes, um, you know, the feminist at the time used to say she's the most liberated woman in America. <laughs> I, I, I would put a fine point on that. I would say, I don't think she's a feminist in that she doesn't believe in equal opportunities for women and men. She doesn't believe there should be equality written into our constitution. But if you look at the way she lived her life, I think she definitely availed herself to all the opportunities that were so hard fought by feminist leaders. And that is deeply ironic. And then yeah. that's why we're making a series. When you do a series like this, a television can have, as you've seen in your career, a real impact, a real effect. And particularly when you're dealing with subject matter that people may not be familiar with at all. What are your hopes that you want people to take away from with this? It's so funny you ask that, Pete, because I always am interested in what people are taking away from it, because I think we all project our own personal experiences and our knowledge onto whatever we're watching on TV. And what is so exciting now that the show has come out is seeing how divergent people's reactions are and how different people react based on how they're coming to the show. Um, but really, my hope is that, like anything I write, that it does stimulate political discourse and conversation. If people are talking about this and talking about their own experiences and it gets them feeling things and it's thought provoking, then that's really the most I can hope for with a series, series like this. I don't want to date myself too much, but when I was watching this, particularly in the early episodes, I go, and when you were at the uh, Democratic convention, when McGovern was there, I was there. And- uh, You were there? Yeah, yeah. Oh I my God. Was involved in politics at a very young age, and I weasel. I wish you been a consultant. As an alternate on the uh, California delegation, and I was sitting there on the floor, and I can tell you, watching that particular depiction, how realistic it was, because as they were trying to get these hardcore uh, things into the platform, um, one woman came up to me, I was sitting on the delegation, because you fill seats there, and said, are you going to vote this way on, on the abortion thing? And I said, 
I don't know. I can't say. I can't say. And they immediately kicked me off and brought a delegate in because they, they were, and you really depict that too about how George McGovern at the time might have been compromised by by these kinds of things in the platform that, that the women wanted in there. That really did happen. And here's my uh, Shirley uh -huh. For a I love it. sticker and and McGovern. So I, you know, I just wanted to, to <sighs> tell you, you that, made you know, okay. That's amazing. You know, my what I looked at at that period of time, I go like, wow, she must have been an eyewitness there somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could teleport it back because it seemed like such an exciting convention. Um, I can't believe you were there. I wish we had called you. I, you know, my dad's a political <laughs> scientist and he teaches American governments. So I definitely. Called him a lot. I read Gary Hart's book. I read Shirley MacLaine's account. Read Shirley Kingdom's yeah. book, The Good Fight. And so you know, actually, you know all about the California Challenge, which is something we had such a hard time as writers explaining <laughs> what the California Challenge was. But you probably you were in the delegation. It was a very interesting experience, and interesting to see. You know, sometimes television doesn't get it right. Our things are rewritten. Our things are there. And sometimes when you see that, and then to see it portrayed through the whole decade the way this moves i really like the structure that you brought in as a, a creator here in targeting different things and, and keeping us involved uh throughout oh well, thank you that especially since you were there that really means a lot and we really worked hard on getting it right and really like everything from i remember being on the sound stage for when we were filming the that, that abortion vote and I was like, it's the last night of the convention. It's going to be very, very messy. I need more garbage on the floor. <laughs> like, it was just every detail, even if you didn't see the floor. But just when we had that bird's eye view, I wanted to see just how messy it was. And I wanted them eating the hot dogs and the drinks in hand. Like, just all, and making sure all the signs were right. So I think I, I really it get, get off from kind of getting all those details right. I, I, I find you're right. It gives you a sense that you were maybe there. Yeah, really? uh, you cast Sarah Paulson in it, but she is an amalgamation, I yeah, guess. Yeah. To yeah. represent. So she's one of the few in there that isn't based on a specific person. Right. So there were a lot of women in the Stop ARA movement and or Schlafly the Eagles, they're called, who are not public figures. So we couldn't really use real names. So they were inspired by different women who did live their time, neighbors of Phyllis or women who were in the Stop ARA movement. But we created these composite characters. Uh, Sarah being one of them, and also Kaylee Carter playing Pamela, who's another composite character. We really wanted, I wanted to represent the homemakers who were formed the basis of her grassroots movement, because I really was interested in why, they, why Phyllis's message appealed to them, how they felt um, in regards to the women's movement, and I found them I found their plight very sympathetic, that you're told for so many years that, or your entire upbringing, that all you need to do to be the ideal woman is be a good wife and mother, and then suddenly that's not true anymore, and you're relegated to being just a housewife. I think that's painful, and I think when we, we tend to write about progress and social movements as in terms of it's positive and it's about joy and moving forward, but really it's also about loss. And there is a lot of loss when you have a disruption to society, even a positive one. So I really wanted to capture that with these characters. And Sarah Paulson coming on to play Alice just allowed me to do so much more with that character that I, I couldn't have done without her. You know, it's fascinating doing these series uh, to see how things are changing in the entertainment industry are hopefully changing because I'm interviewing so many powerful women producers, showrunners, creators that are uh, getting these stories told <laughs> that I don't think in the old, uh, you know, template of the way Hollywood was run that we'd ever see these. I mean, women's voices are starting to be heard behind the lens, as this series is called, in a much bigger way. Do you agree or is that just... Uh, I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> I would say even as early as five years ago, I thought would we ever get to tell our own stories and have more female showrunners and producers out there. And I think having, um, you know, there's so much content out there. You know, it used to be, it was just CBS, ABC, NBC, and that was it. But there's so many outlets for telling stories. And I think that has helped. I think also powerful women are saying it's time for more women to be in positions of power. And I, I hope this is just the beginning. There's still a scarcity of content about women and strong female characters and complex female characters. You know, I love to see more shows that allow women to be unrelatable and unlikable and and messy and anti-heroes and villains. I think that is where I'd love us to see headed, but I'm definitely feeling 
hopeful, <laughs> encouraged just by your show alone. I noticed just there are many more women recently than ever before. I think that's really yeah. amazing.